of men, it's not going to go well for you. And but, we, we want to have everybody in eternal life. But if someone, for instance, is gay, and then, but why are we, like, going towards them and being like, oh, you can't be gay, you can't be by this, acting like we're more pious, like... Well, I don't know who does that. We will say, though, that same-sex attraction is not biblical. And but, acting on same-sex attraction is certainly not biblical because God created nature in a certain way. And how you act is what matters a lot more than how you feel. But it's implied when we're voting Trump for president because Trump is very clearly against all How do we get to Trump? Things. I thought we are talking about, like, the Bible and all this stuff. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back giving us a new video. Today, we're going to be checking out Charlie Cook. Mostly peaceful debates get heated instantly. Okay, according to Charlie Kick, because of kicking us, let's get right to today's video. Okay, my first question is, so the Bible, you're taking the Bible as a fact book, which really doesn't make sense because it has like a million, not a million, but like a lot of different authors. And also there's four birth stories. No, so you- one author. God is the author, but a lot of people transcribe. Okay. <laughs> okay, but if God, God is not the author, the people, certain people wrote the Bible. They, they, tra have, they transcribed it for sure. From what? Well, Moses heard from God, and he transcribed Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But Moses wasn't alive when all of these other people were writing the same book. Okay, right. So what you're talking about is, again, we're t there's one author, many transcribers, but that actually proves the point of the Bible. Because if there was only one person that wrote it, then might, it might have been just kind of one person's opinion. Instead, you have Solomon, who wrote Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, King David, who wrote Psalms, and then you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then you have... Paul, who wrote 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Romans, and 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Jude. It kind of proves the point that all these people weren't all, like, working together, yet 66 different books all came to together. the same conclusion. That there is a God. We are not him. We're in constant rebellion against that God. That God loves us so much because God is love that he sent his son on a rescue mission to save us from our broken nature so that we can live I'm forever. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you're getting off a topic. So, basically... <laughs> did what, I get off topic, guys? I don't, uh, I don't think I did. Yeah. Because... If, okay. It's okay. But so, but it doesn't all come to the same conclusion because there are multiple stories of, in different books, there are multiple stories of the same story. And all of these writers. Like what? You mean like the birth of Jesus? Yes. But they're not contradictory. That's actually a proof They the are point. contradictory. How, how is the birth of Jesus? Explain to me. I mean, I mean, I'm. Certain, some of the stories say that it happened at a different time. Some of them say that they oh, happened at a oh, different got place. It. Oh, no, no, that's interesting. So that's not contradictory. That actually proves the point. So for example, if right now, God forbid, there was a big car accident and there were five witnesses, someone would say, well, I think he was wearing a yellow shirt. And someone would say, well, I think it was like a yellowish red shirt. And someone would say, I think the car was red. And then what the fact gatherer does is they'll see a pattern between that. Because even when you have a lot of eyewitnesses, not everyone's eyewitness will be exactly the same. True. But everyone will agree, oh, there was a car accident. So, and that's how the birth of Jesus was. They weren't disagreeing that there was a virgin birth or that it happened in Bethlehem. But some of their like details might have been inconsistent, which actually proves the Bible is true. It proves that they were not all deriving off the same canonical document. It proves that these were four different accounts that went out to try to find the truth. And people might have had different variations of it, but they were talking about the same elemental events. But if the goal towards the Bible is to find a general consensus, then why are we taking like little lines, little verses and we're taking them as completely factual so, such as well for instance in leviticus it talks about like a man laying with another man and leviticus it talks about, 19 yeah a, yes. man, a man shall not lay with another man but yes. he shall be stoned to death which right. actually m has been proven to be like translated wrong and it was actually about pe but that, that is not correct but that it, it literally going back to the original hebrew it's adam shall not lie with another adam I'm, uh, you're totally wrong on that but but anyway if, especially if you were wrong if you were correct, why also did God destroy Sodom can, for the can, sin of homosexuality? Why is it repeated in Titus and in Jude and Second Corinthians? But whatever. The point is that you're saying don't cherry pick verses. Is that what you're saying? Yes, but okay. the point still stands where we are taking individual verses and we are putting them towards our core beliefs. Why are we doing that? Because if we're the goal is to find a general consensus, a lot of these verses do not have that much like clear set like guidelines that it actually so you're is you're not making a bad point we added verses just so we're clear in the original scriptures there were no chapters and there are no verse numbers okay yeah. so verses were inserted so that we knew what we were talking about imagine if you came up here and you said well somewhere in leviticus i'm able to say leviticus 19 so we have a reference point but what is the consensus of the bible what do you think it is through all 66 books and one author what is the story what is it trying to tell us 
Well, the Bible should be taken as a book of literature with like meaning behind some of the stories okay, I, rather I, than I don't agree, but a what, factual fine. book. What is then the literary, what, what do you think is the meaning of the Bible? Well, generally the meaning of the Bible is to have like good morals, to treat others how you want to be treated, that kind of stuff. But it's sort of when it's taken as a rule book, then it is taken. But aren't morals rules? But kind of, but not completely because some of these rules are not more like they don't they're not general morals they're just tiny little rules like if we took any like li we take lines out of the bible out of context oh you want to be able to eat this meat you want to be able to play football you want to be able to do any of that and so it just doesn't make sense why no, we're no, taking i'm trying to take a step back what would you say is the essence of the word of god what would you looking at it even from a literary meeting what do you think is the story it's trying to tell us the story that it's trying to tell us is that you're supposed to be nice to others, and also, also, all, it's trying to tell nice you the is story. Nice the Bible, but... Yeah, well, yes, but, but there's there's synonyms to the word nice, by the way, but... Um, but let's go through this. Do you believe it says that God created the heavens and the earth? It does say that. Okay, good. That's one verse. No, I'm not cherry picking. Yes. It's the first verse. Do you agree that the general consensus is that we are sinned and flawed beings? Yes. Okay. Does it then, then does all of a sudden, there is this repetition of a coming Messiah. You agree that that is repeated? Yes, but there is a certain book that was taken out of the Bible um, that what talks... Book? I can't remember the name, but... Yeah, um, it, if it, it doesn't. Yeah. The book of Enoch is not canonical. It never was to the Jews. But it's in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's not, it's not canonical. But yes, so, but then going to... Then, then I, I want to go through this. So then, yes, that there was a Messiah. Then you agree that the Bible argues that Messiah comes. But how do we know all of these books are canonical if there are certain books great, that are taken That's a out. great question. That's where the Jews come in. Where the Jews are the keepers of the canon. So the Jews going back 5,000 years have been cherishing the, the Torah plus the Tanakh, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's the Torah. And then we have what is called, um, then we have the Tanakh, which is, um, boy, I'm going to be tested here. It is, uh, Joshua, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Chronicles, going all the way through, right? Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, um, major prophets, minor prophets, Jeremiah, Nehemiah. So they're the ones that count that as canonical, right? And remember, it was Jews who then saw Jesus. So it's a direct line from the Old Testament to the fulfilled Messiah and the covenant. Then Jesus comes, like as it says in Isaiah 53, like a root out of dry ground, just pops open. Here's this amazing virgin birth fulfilled. We know that because in the book of Haggai, Bethlehem, we know that because of Isaiah, was hated by his own peers, pierced by his transgressions. Every single fulfillment of prophecy happened one after the other after the other. Then he lives a perfect life, does a bunch of miracles, was literally killed, rose from the dead. People that previously hated him, loved him, followed him. But what is the story then it says after that? Because you would even agree, it's not about being nice. There's something greater, right? It's that we have to do something. What is it the Bible tells us we have to do? Well, the Bible is telling us that we have to have faith, obviously, Good. in God and all of that stuff. And to accept what? What do we have to accept? Well, I mean, it depends on the religion, but, um, like, uh, not the re religion, sorry, Good. denomination. But, um, like, with Catholicism, you have to, like, accept him, like, the body and the flesh, obviously, and certain things like that. But it's more of, like, accepting him into your heart kind of sure. stuff. Sure. So, no, but now but, we're getting somewhere. So, w instead of cherry-picking verses, so we start with creation. God created us. We rebel. We stay in a state of rebellion. He sends a Messiah. That Messiah came. And then we, as the human broken flesh, have to accept that free gift so then we can come back into permanent communion with the everlasting Father through Jesus Christ. But if the Bible is about finding Jesus in your heart, why are we trying to fight with people or get like like try to stop other people from living their lives? Well... I'm not sure what you mean by that, but the scriptures call us to call everybody to Christ. The heart is, my heart is to try to bring people to the ultimate standard, which is Christ our Lord. E and, and by the way, if somebody is in error, you should want to tell them the truth, right? If someone is going around saying that there is no God, you should want to tell them, no, you're wrong. Because the Bible also says those that do not accept Christ as Lord is going to have eternal judgment. It's not going to go well for you. And but we, we want to have everybody in eternal life. But if someone, for instance, is gay, and then, but... Why are we like going towards them and being like, oh, you can't be gay, you can't be by this, acting like we're more pious? Like, well, I don't know who does that. We will say though that same sex attraction is not biblical, and but, acting on same sex attraction is certainly not biblical because God created nature in a certain way, and how you act is what matters a lot more than how you feel. 
But it's implied when we're voting Trump for president because Trump is very clearly against. How do we get to Trump? Disease. I thought we're talking about like the Bible and all this stuff. So, but I, we're, we're dancing over the place. Are you a Christian? I'm am Catholic. Yes. Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad because I couldn't tell based on how we're dancing around. Do you think it would be a good thing if more people accepted Christ? Yes, but not in the way that most. I feel like most Christians and most Catholics are trying Fair to. Fair enough. Get people. So I'm going to try to connect. I don't that. agree with evangelization. Evangelization, really, to well, be then honest. You don't believe in Christianity. Go and make disciples of all nations was literally the last thing that Christ said. But that's fine. So, but l let me. So you believe that we should repent for our sins? Yes. How can we repent if we don't know the sins? Hmm. Because. Things do not have to be, okay, so if we're repenting for our sins, these sins do not have to be, like, things that are just, like, said, like, as I'm saying before, once in the Bible, it was said once in the Bible, it was said a couple times in the Bible, those things are not, they're not, like, core, they're not core beliefs, they're not Well, let's just things, take the Ten Commandments, which one of those do you disagree with? Well, I believe... I don't disagree with, to be honest. What I'm getting at, though, is that the only way we bring people to Christ is if they know how, fall they sh how, how much they fall short of the glory of God. They only know they fall short of the glory of God if they know God's perfect standard and law, which we know throughout the scriptures. So, for example, as I went through the Ten Commandments earlier, you might say, oh, I don't violate them. You're violating do not covet every day. You're violating do not steal every day. You're violating that stuff every single day. And only with, that's why we need a savior. And that's why on college campus, all about me, all about me. It's meology. When in reality, we need Christ to come into our life. We need to yeah. repent. We but, need to get down on our hands and knees and say, Jesus, come into my life. The problem, the problem isn't everybody wanting people to stop being Christian, wanting people to stop being Catholic. And I'm not trying to refute Christianity because I am Catholic myself. But the thing is, is that this is more of a political yeah. organization, a political thing that is going on. And why are we not separating church and state? Okay, Why you're is... all over the place. That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. But I will just close by this. So I will say that the most important thing you can do in your life is give your life to Christ and make Christ known. The Woo! second most important yeah. thing is to make sure you can do the first thing. My mission at Turning Point USA is to make sure that the gospel can still be spread, that church is never deemed non-essential again, and that, look at this, through a political venue, thousands of kids now are hearing the gospel at University of North Texas, and that's a day well spent. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. This is not the gospel. Okay, um, this lady right here is, <sighs> she's a lot, she's a lot, and while speaking, I, I, I was really shocked by her words, but as far as she was getting understanding and clarity, until she brought out Trump. Why are you talking about Trump? I thought we were talking about Jesus Christ, about Christianity, about, um, the Old New Testament about how true Christianity and Catholic is. Then how did Trump come about? Well, her, her say and how she see Christianity about her faith is, is different for someone being um, born again, being a Catholic. I was not expecting her to speak like this. Uh, she does not believe in evangelism to go preach the word of God to other people. Um, that is her own side. For me, if you are a Christian or you're a Catholic, you should share the word of God. You should not allow people condemn or to be condemned because Jesus Jesus wants us to go share the gospel to people who have not heard it before. That is why he sent his disciples to go to different cities to go preach the words of God so that people will be able to know about Jesus Christ, about so that they will all be safe about the word of God, that Christ is real, that God exists. So if, if she does not believe about evangelism, then I feel like she missed her Bible school. She should still go back to um, a church. or She should go back to church and go um, or a cathedral to go pray and learn more about the scriptures. Because she's, she's enlightened, but not fully enlightened. And she's, she's how should I put this word? She don't know where she stand. Someone who does not know where she stands is exactly who she is. She does not know where she stands. And she's fighting against her own fate. So I love how Charlie handled her and tell, he proved her wrong. And she was just trying to like make Charlie say something kind of like wrong about Christianity. And Charlie already know this. <laughs> and Charlie is one who is really, really deep down into the scriptures. 
there are some scriptures that I quote today. I myself, me, I'm a Christian. I, I know about him, but I don't know the verses. But he he was say he was calling the verses as I was like, oh wow, he are really rooted in, in the scripture. That is beautiful to me, to you. Um, Tom, that's something I love about Charlie and Tony Point USA because I must say I'm a Christian and Charlie never fails to bring out the word of God whenever it's needed, whenever it's been prompted out, whenever someone is challenging his feet, he brings out the scriptures and defends Christianity wholeheartedly. And I really appreciate that about Charlie. And him defending about Christianity right here really made me happy. Even if he's not like a perfect scholar, but he's, he knows more about the word of God and scriptures that he will be able to defend with it when, when it comes with challenges like this. This was a beautiful to watch. Whenever you think about this video, give us a thumbs up, share this video to as many as can, subscribe to our channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe.